Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you are the source of all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And as we have this, hopefully, brief time of study in your word, we pray, Father God, that you would send your Holy Spirit into our minds to teach us. There's no hindrance, Lord God, when, you're, when it's the Holy Spirit leading us into all truth. So we thank you, Father, that as we have this time today, you will lead us and guide us. And we ask that you reveal to us uh, depth upon depth of your word, that we may, able, we may be able to apply it in our lives on a daily basis. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So I'm, we are going to call this lesson, The Work of Believing. Okay, if you have your Bibles with me, or, you know, you might not need that because I'll put that here on the video. Uh, we are going to read John chapter 6, verses 25 to 29 in the New International Version. Here we go. Verse, 20, verse 25, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Verse 26, Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you. You are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Verse 27, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on, for on him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Verse 28, then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires. Verse 29, Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. He has sent. Amen. So as I, as I was reading this passage of scripture, in fact, I read it in three different translations just to get a broader text, broader context rather, of what this verse is saying. Um, I noticed that the people, the crowd of people that were looking for Jesus, that, were, that followed him from one place to another, um, asked him a question. And the question they asked was about the works that God um, requires of his people. So one of the insights I got from, from this passage is that uh, I got the sense that the people who were following Jesus asked him about what specific works, what set of works, maybe they were asking for a list, maybe they were asking for how-tos and what-tos and, 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 and you know, mechanics on doing the things, on doing the works that God requires because they were probably used to the legalistic or the works-based system of their tradition and old religion because um, that's what they got from, 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 you know, from, from the Law of Moses. Uh, from the first five, five books of the Bible and that's what they got from uh, following the commands that God gave through Moses. And so they were probably asking Jesus, what are the things or you know, the actions or the deeds that we must do to be able to please God or to meet his requirements? This actually reminds me of the time when uh, one, of, uh, one of the teachers of the law asked Jesus, um, well, Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And so, and then uh, Jesus gave him, uh, just uh, reminded him of, of the two greatest commandments, which is to love the Lord your God and to love others as yourself. And so it's kind of like this here in this, it's kind of like that in this, in this scenario here. So the people were asking Jesus perhaps some legal thing or some ritualistic thing or some uh, something concrete that they could do with their physical bodies in order to meet what God requires. This is the inclination of our human nature, of our fallen sinful nature. We want to do something to get to God. We want to, to have an input or we want to have uh, an effort. We want to have a contribution to our... Um, ascent or ascent to our rising up or meeting God at his holy level but it's an impossible task because we are imperfect flawed humans we are sinners uh, apart from the grace of God and so uh, again they were asking for works plural plural they were asking for many things uh, which would should we do how should we do it now they're probably thinking those things 
The second insight I gathered from this passage is in, um, of course, it's in, in the, fo the focal verse for our study today is uh, verse 29, where Jesus answered them in the New International Version. The translation goes, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So the second insight that I got there is that Jesus gave them an uncomplicated answer and a very simple solution. Believe, have faith and trust in God and trust in Jesus whom God the Father sent on the earth. Now, that might have blown away the minds of these Jewish uh, followers of Jesus because, again, they were so used to what the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all the, uh, the, the religious people of their time did, follow the rules, sacrifice the animals, uh, ritual cleansing, and so on and so forth. And so now Jesus telling them to just believe in God and believe in the one whom he sent, referring to himself, must have uh, shaken their religious background, their traditional mindset, and their legalistic um, culture and upbringing. So just to go a little deeper with, with this particular passage, John chapter, or particular verse rather, John chapter 6, verse 9, let's, let me read it to you in three uh, different translations just so we can get a broader and, and deeper look at these, at these words that Jesus says. So yeah, again, um, by the way, this is, this is where we, that's where we are actually, most of us in our lives, before we get to get to know God, before we get to know God it's by faith, we get to know Him and have a deeper relationship with Him. We're at the place where we want to do something to probably earn our, our righteousness from God or to probably pay for our sins. We want to do something. What is, Jesus, what, what works must we do to be in good standing? Na okay me, na okay ko ni Lord, that I'll be okay with God the Father. What should I do? What should I work on and what should I uh, contribute Okay, now going through the translations, as I said earlier. First, in the New International Version, which you've already heard. Jesus, Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. He has sent. And so Jesus gives the followers, uh, or, or, or the Jewish followers, the crowd that was following him, he gives them a very, um, uh, he gives them the, the answer that's, that, that was quite the opposite of what they were looking for. They were looking for action. They were looking for something to do with their, you know, something concrete, like maybe sacrifice 10 bulls or, or, or give thanks of thank offerings of 10 doves or 10,000 doves as, uh, um, as some might have done. Um, but Jesus gives them a work and he narrows it down to just one instead of many works that the people were asking for. He narrows it down to just one work, which is to believe, to have faith, and, and, and in, in the Amplified Classic uh, edition of the Bible, the word trust or believe is expounded in faith, expounded by the word faith, rely on, depend on, cleave to, cling to God for your dear life. And so, yeah, um, the work that God uh, requires from us is to believe in the one he has sent. From the Passion Translation, reading the same uh, scripture, John 6, John 6, verse 29, Jesus answered, the work you can do for God starts with believing in the one he has sent. He has sent. So it's not, it's, it's not uh, the work that God wants us to do is not uh, go to the poor and give to them or go to the sick and heal them or uh, perform signs and wonders, although that is part of of how we can demonstrate the kingdom of God on earth. But that's not where we should start. Jesus is saying here that the work we can do, and in fact, if I may be so bold, that the work we should do, first of all, is uh, believe in God. Believe in Jesus Christ whom he sent. Believe that the work of Jesus Christ is done and complete and super effective from eternity to eternity. And um, believe that when he says he will use you for his glory, he will do it in his way, in his time, and uh, uh, in his power. So we're, uh, we are asked by Jesus, we are told by Jesus to work, uh, the work that God requires, the work that we can do is to start with believing in the one he has sent. 
in the amplified in the amplified classic version of the Bible, still John six verse twenty nine, Jesus replied, "This is the work or service that God asks of you, that you believe in the one whom He has sent, that you cleave, trust, rely on, and have faith in His messenger." So if you are uh, as you see in the in the words that are flashed on, on the on, on this video right now, um, uh, hallelujah. Um, <laughs> these are words that pertain to our um, our soul and our spirit, um, putting our, our our putting entrusting our soul and our spirit, relying on God, uh, trusting in God. So this is this is the primary work if I may say so, that God wants us to do is not physical work, but spiritual work. Work that requires us to entrust our lives, our all to Him. Not, not the going to a mission strip, not the uh, doing evangelism at the street corner, not the preaching in the pulpit, but it's to believe and to trust and to rely and to depend on Him for our dear life. For further explanation, next segment of our video today uh, I frequently read Bible commentaries and these are a collection of insights a collection of ideas a collection of revelations from Bible teachers from pastors from preachers uh, on different passages of the, of the in fact the entire Bible has commentaries on the internet you can look for them online um, just to deepen and to expound uh, the our, our focal verse, which is John chapter six verse twenty nine, and and in line with our with the title of this of this lesson, the work of believing. Um, I read first. Oh, let me just read to you one of the commentaries that I found on this particular passage from the pulpit from the pulpit commentary. It says here, to believe in Him, to habitually entrust oneself to the power and grace of Christ, to make a full moral surrender of our soul to the Lord includes in itself all other work and is in itself the great work of God. of God. And so it is important that we understand that before we do the great works, before we um, you know, go across, we, we cross oceans or uh, cross continents just to bring the gospel, uh, of the kingdom of God to people who haven't heard it. Before we go to the sick and, and lay hands on them and, 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 and uh, release healing, before we go to the poor and give them uh, comfort, we must be able to get to a place where we believe in God, in what He can do, believe in His words, believe that He is good, believe in His character, believe in His power, uh, uh, as this commentary says. So, we must habitually entrust ourselves to Him. Like habitually means consistently, constantly, day to day, every day. It's a non-stop thing. We can't stop believing in God. We can't stop trusting. We cannot stop trusting in God. And so the work that we are to do, uh, I believe, personal belief, the work that we are to do that is acceptable to God, which is to believe in Him, to believe in Jesus, is, is one that keeps on going. It's a progressive work because we... We keep growing from faith to faith, and our, our, our belief in God grows stronger from, from, from glory to glory. The more that the more we are, um, the more we, we we get revelation from His Word and insight from the Holy Spirit. From, from Martin Luther, the great uh, reform reformer of, of you know Christian history, he says here. This is again from one of the commentaries I read. He says, "Pardon me." To depend on God's word so that the heart is not terrified by sin and death, but trusts and believe in God in a much uh, or is a, is, is a much more severe and more difficult thing than all orders of monks demand. So some, and, and, and uh, by the way, Martin Luther uh, was a monk himself. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So he knew, so all the orders or all the things that, are, that were required in, in, in a monastery, in a monastic life, uh, believing or depending on God's word, believing in him alone, trusting and believing in him, 
was, is more difficult than doing uh, the physical things and doing the requirements of the law. So this is why I, I believe this is why many followers of Jesus, many believers of Jesus, many in Christian leadership find it easier to do, 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 do things for God rather than focusing on the work that Jesus outlined in John 6, 29, which is to believe. Because believing God requires a lot more, I don't know, requires a lot more faith, requires a lot more discipline, requires a lot more effort, I guess, because sometimes it's it's hard to believe, it, or no, not sometimes. It is hard to believe the things that we can't see. It is hard to believe the things that we can't touch. It's hard to believe the things that are yet to come, uh, things that are still in the future. But you can do things now. You can feed the poor now. You can you can give counsel to a broken person now. You can um, you can preach at the street corner now. So that's why it's easier to do the physical works than to do the work that God requires, which is to believe, because you know uh, we're we're more physically attuned sometimes that we are than we are spiritually attuned. And uh, the final insight or the final commentary that I will share to you, the third commentary I will share to you, comes from my, my own pastor, my, my own pastor, Bishop Joe DiSarno. Um, I'm paraphrasing here, but this is one of the things that he, he says from the pulpit. Our, our fight is to get to a place of faith where we place more belief on what God says than on what the devil says. The devil says. So, um, and for me personally, I received that as you know, we talk so much about spiritual warfare and fighting demons and stuff. But for me, my, this is my personal experience. You, you may not share it and it may, your experience might be different. But I've always, many times, most of the time, I'm fighting to get to a place where I believe God's word. Where, where Lord, you said you're my healer, you will heal. Lord, you said you're my provider, I believe that you're my provider, even in the midst of financial uh, problems. Lord, you promised that you will never put me to shame, even though if I'm in the midst of a situation that looks like I'm going to fall flat on my face and people are going to point an accusing finger at me. But anyway, our work is to get to a place where we believe God, what God says, where we believe what Jesus can do, what Jesus did on the cross, more than what the circumstances around us tell us, more than what the demons are screaming in our ears. So, yeah, the work God gave us to do, the work that you and I can do, is to believe in the one he sent, to believe in God himself. Um, the service, you know, because we always say, you know, we want to do acts of service, I want to serve the church, I want to serve God, I want to do this. But the service that God requires of us is to believe him, to trust in him, to cleave to him. And, 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 um, and I personally believe God's just going to take care of everything else that he wants us to do. In fact, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> in conclusion, um, hopefully you followed me so far. In conclusion, just two conclusions this time. It'll flash on your screens. The first one, uh, based on our passage uh, of John chapter 6, verses 25 to 29, with our focal verse, verse 29. Number one, number one, work on getting to a place of faith in God. Okay. okay, so I know many of us want to work on, you know, how can I speak in tongues better? How can I uh, perform miracles better? How can I pray better? But if we're not in, a, we're, if we don't, if we haven't gotten to a place where our faith in God is bigger than our fear of the enemy or bigger than our ability to speak in tongues or, or, or bigger than, uh, where our faith is bigger than our ability to prophesy and, and, um, discern stuff then um we could just be doing things for god on our own you know with uh because we decide to do it uh, but i believe working to get to a place of faith in god should be the first thing which jesus said anyway the work that god requires and the work that god gave us to do or that we can do is to believe start by believing the one he sent so it should be first because sometimes we go after doing great things for God without being anchored on faith. Feel free to agree, feel free to disagree, but always feel free to check the Bible and pray to the Lord about what I'm saying. So in order for us to get to a place where we believe God more, 
than our emotions, where we believe God more than our circumstances, we must have an input of faith to increase our faith. We must boost. You know, we, we keep hearing about, uh, uh, during the, this, these COVID times, we keep hearing about boost your immune system, boost your immune system, drink vitamins, drink vitamins. But we need to boost our belief in God. And how do we do that? How do we increase faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So we have to read the Word of God. We have to go back to the Word, read the Word, uh, eat the Word, not literally, but spiritually consume the Word of God so that our faith will increase and our our, our, our clinging to God, our, our holding on to God will become much better. Our trust in Him becomes stronger. And, our, and, and, and that's the work that Jesus says we are to do. The work of believing in God, the work in believing the one that God sent, who is Jesus Christ. Number two, second conclusion, and we'll be we'll, we'll I'll close with this. Work for and in the kingdom of God flows out of faith. That's how it's supposed to be. God will instruct you and me as to what we are to do with our lives when we are. Uh, we, when we have reached a place of faith in Him, um, I'm sure some of you have heard uh, that um, the, you know, the, 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 the adage or, or the saying that goes around in, our, in, in the body of Christ where, you know, God will only entrust the kingdom to mature sons and daughters. And, and one of the ways we mature in, 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 in the kingdom of God as sons and daughters is when we have more faith in God, when we believe Him, when we trust Him, when we hold on to Him, when we cling on to His every word, and instead of uh, going with our feelings, instead of being swayed by circumstances, and so on and so forth. No? So God will instruct you and me uh, as to what to do with our lives when we, are, when we have arrived, when we are already in a place of faith in Him. Doing things for God, doing great things for God, and doing great things with God, should just be an overflow of our faith encounter and our faith life with God. Um, this is why uh, Jesus, I believe Jesus spent a lot of time, a lot of alone time with his father. He would withdraw from his disciples, from people, uh, and he needs when he needed to talk to God. Early in the morning, he would go to a sol uh, an isolated place to commune with God. Perhaps at night, he also does that. Because... Um, his ministry came out of his relationship, his intimacy with the Father. He only spoke what the Father wanted him to speak. He only did what the Father wanted him to do. And in our case, we can only get to that kind of place when we approach God first for faith, when we seek Him and seek His heart and seek His face. And... Um, not go to him and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? It's to, to get to know him. It's, it's to get uh, to a place where we trust him, to get to a place where we believe him, uh, where, where we get to a place where when he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, we believe that. When he says, I will never uh, put you to shame, and we believe that. When we get to a place where, when he says, I will supply all your needs according to my, to, to my glorious riches, and we believe that. And so once we have been anchored in a place of faith in our relationship with God the Father, then what he wants us to do, he will speak. He will tell you, he will tell me. We won't have to make up our own schemes. We won't have to strategize. We, we just need to listen to what the Father wants us to do. So, so I want to end with this. Uh, by praying for you. Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is living, active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It divides soul from soul, soul from spirit and discerns the intents and, and, and attitudes of our hearts. Thank you, Lord, that with this short and simple Bible study, I, I thank you that you can use this Holy Spirit to broaden our perspectives, to take us deeper into truth. And we thank you that you are always true to your word that you are uh, that when when we that when we hear it, faith will always come to us, and we increase in faith by as we keep hearing your word um, on a regular basis. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for for speaking to each one of us now, 
And we pray that you would seal what you have released into our lives. Seal it with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for this time that you've given us. Bless my brothers and sisters. Cover us with your precious blood throughout the week. Uh, we give you all praise, glory, and honor, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Go with God because God goes with you.